Mabrika buni ne zero. Kalan ni bonrish kaimandiri. Kasike yukaeki yame wani daka. Ikonye wahiuba agroforestry. Akia carbon sequestration. Welcome to Net Zero. My name is Kalan Nibon Rish Kaima, chief of the Jamaican Hummingbird Taino people. Jamaica is a small island, a developing state in the Greater Antilles that remains committed to advancing climate action. In April 2021, Jamaica targeted an ambitious 60% reduction in greenhouse gas emission by 2030. The upgraded new goal addressed land use change, forestry emissions, and committing to deeper emission reductions in the energy sector. Can agroforestry help mitigate climate change and remove CO2 from our air permanently? Una May Gordon is the principal director of climate change in Jamaica. She has over 40 years of climate change and environmental management experience and has worked on successful national, regional, and international development projects. It is my great pleasure to welcome Una May Gordon to net zero. Una May Gordon, my question for you starts with, can you share your vision for 2050 as it relates to the relationship between land use and food production? What actions have been taken to date by Jamaica following the commitment made in November at COP26? Start to value, place a value on the land that we have, that finite resource that we have. And therefore, if we place a real value on it, then the relationship between the people and the land would change. Since we came back from COP, we have enhanced our NDC, as you know, with these ambitious targets. We didn't speak in the NDC about any new targets. We did not set any new targets. Within the NDC and what you see modeled in the NDC, are commitments that the government have already made, and we modeled those. And that it, was a, it was a novel approach, and therefore, if we are able to implement those promises without setting any new ones, we would, we would be well on our way by 2030. What are the greatest challenges you see, short and long term, to Jamaica achieving her vision? The, the, this balance between um, or this fight, uh, this challenge, whatever we want to call it, between land for food production and land for housing is not new. And, and I think it will continue. It is land is an economic resource. And therefore, if we continue to not look critically at what the pillars of the economy and, and, and where our future lies, then I think that challenge will remain. What strategies are you most convinced will help us achieve the balance between land use and food production? How are we moving forward? And I'll come to that later on. How are we moving forward? How are we going to meet this target? Really, that's the only way. And we need not only to, to sit in a corner and develop this strategy, but I think there needs to be this national discourse to, to develop this strategy, to move forward where all sectors of society understands. Um, so communication will become paramount. Um, who are the players? A segmentation of the, of the stakeholders in terms of who, and then having that discourse both individually and collectively. How important is agroforestry and indigenous agricultural knowledge in achieving our objectives? If we don't value that indigenous knowledge that people have and turn it into asset and help it to inform policy, I think we, are, we have a problem. And the question of agroforestry, part of the challenge why we have not seen more uptake with fruit, fruit um, orchards, because there's really no orchards of fruit trees. And there is really no calculation then or baseline data that, that we can go on. I think we are making some progress to change that. And if, it's, if it, it is one of my vision too, 
that that we will we will change some of that. Following the commitment made last November at COP26, what's the timeline and climate actions you are working on over the next ten months in the lead ah. up to COP? Since we came back, I think we have advanced significantly on on um, preparing to complete our long term strategy. We have commenced preparation of the National Adaptation Plan. And since we came back from COP, we finished the adaptation communication. An interesting piece of work that we started, which we are doing now, is really adaptation is local and it is what is important to us. A lot of time we talk about the renewable energy and the this and that's private sector business. But when we talk about the business of the people and the real people on the ground, that's adaptation. Adaptation is really, really local. And so we are and at the local level, then the municipal corporations um, in, the con- in, the, in the parishes becomes an important player. So we are trying to, to work now um, with the municipal corporation, um, a couple of the corporation to strengthen their own capacity to drive climate action at the local level. Thank you, Director Unami Garden, for your leadership and for sharing your insights into the challenges and solutions for achieving net zero. I am Kalan Nibon Rish Kaiman. I add my voice to the voices of my net zero international youth peers to monitor the action of our world's leaders to achieve their net zero commitments.